Good morning everyone and welcome to Wednesday Worship here at SPSJ Hereford. It's wonderful to have you joining us. If you're new with us, my name's Andy, I'm the vicar here and I'm just really glad that you're watching today. Uh, we're going to take you right back today to April, if you can remember uh, right back at the beginning of this crisis. And we celebrated Easter, albeit in a very, very strange way. And so today's service, we're going to go right back to that Easter story again. And we've got a great talk lined up for you by a guy called Ken Costa. Uh, Ken Costa is based at Holy Trinity Brompton uh, down in, in London. And he was church warden there for many years, uh, but he was also chair of Alpha International as well, um, as being a, a top investment banker as well. So he's a very successful businessman, and uh, he uh, does amazing work with HTB and Alpha and really is a huge support to them. Uh, in 2007, he wrote a book called God at Work. Um, and he, he's made, when he speaks, he's all about helping us to find our purpose. Uh, and I know he's helped countless millennials as well as being a mentor figure to them. And so today's talk is about finding purpose in the time of uncertainty. Finding purpose in a time of uncertainty. So, um, so do keep watching for that, uh, it's coming up very shortly. But first, if we're going back to Easter, there's only one song that uh, we'll do, and that's that wonderful Easter hymn, Thine Be the Glory. Sing it loud wherever you are today. just really does lift your spirit doesn't it that wonderful chorus when it kicks in and just really speaks of the faith that we have as Christians that God so loved the world he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life so let's pray father God we do thank you 
Thank you for the truth that you care for us, you love us, and you do anything for us, even sending your one and only Son to die for us, that we may know you, we may have a relationship with you. And so be with us now. Help us to just put aside our fears and our anxieties and just come to you with open hands, ready to receive your love, your grace, your forgiveness. We ask this in the name of your wonderful Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. For our Bible reading, we are going to uh, go to Luke's Gospel, and this is Luke chapter uh, 23, and it kind of picks up with Jesus on the cross, beginning at verse 44. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance and watched these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. We're now going to have our talk from Ken Costa and then a song where we can reflect on what he said. I'm speaking from my home in lockdown London. I can't see you, but why not give me a virtual wave? Now we're living in what I call VUCA times, volatile, uncertain, complex, anxious. Volatile, our financial markets are in turmoil. Uncertain, what does post-coronavirus look like? And complex, have you ever known? a time when the issues are so complex and anxious. How do we live today? I must confess, I feel fearful, isolated, longing for the hug of a friend, and in a silly way, I'm desperate to put away my slippers and my running shoes and to put on my work shoes and my tie, wondering, What's left of the life I was living but a few months ago? What the world most needs now, we have the hope for the future, because Jesus rose from the dead, is alive and is with us, and in the midst of this crisis is still here. I want to look at the Easter story through the eyes of Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph, who he? Arimathea, hard to say. I was once introduced as speaking on Joseph of Arrhythmia. Well, our rhythms of life have certainly been destroyed by this pandemic. Joseph appears in only 16 verses, which describe the extraordinary calling of this ordinary lay person. He's but a footnote in the great Easter story, a part of the small print. Sometimes we, and I certainly, feel like that. Just the small print in other people's stories. The unrecognised cog in teams that are led by others. And like many of us, Joseph had been on a journey. He followed Jesus secretly because he was afraid of what others would think of him. 
He was a pragmatic person, not an ordained person. And Luke tells us he was a member of the ruling council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. He was not part of the majority that had consented to condemn Jesus, an innocent man, to death. He bravely stood up and spoke for what he was right and not only for what was convenient. And after the crucifixion, he went to Pilate. He asked for what was left of Jesus's broken body. He was not family, not entitled to the body. And he knew that what was left would never speak to the crowds again, would never heal again, would never raise Lazarus from the dead. And yet he wanted to honor what was left. He had moved from being a secret admirer to now a committed follower. And he identified himself publicly and wanted to give Jesus something of himself. And so he gave him his own tomb. You know, in these VUCA times, I can't stop help thinking and asking, what's left? What's left of the future plans made but a few months ago? What's left of the relationships that were blossoming? What's left of the hopes for a fresh start at work? And we all know there are times when all that's left makes little sense. When there's a silence from God, the silent Saturday before Easter, the purposeless in all that seems left. But the key is that Joseph acted not knowing what would happen on Resurrection Sunday. Now that's faith. Acting when you don't know how the story will end. Joseph did not see the divine pause. What he saw was the pointlessness as he rolled the stone across Jesus' tomb and went away. All of us have silent Saturdays when life seems pointless, hopes are buried, and when it appears that even God himself has disappeared from our lives. So you know, it's amazing to me at the time of Jesus' death, his disciples were nowhere to be seen. I mean, where was John? Where was Peter? Where was Thomas? Mind you, I suppose he had doubts, so we can forgive him. But the other leaders, while some disciples watched from a distance, others left. And Joseph rolled up his sleeves and did the dirty burial work. We can really learn from him. Joseph was not an observer. He took initiative. There was a job to be done. And it's through our practical, ordinary acts that people can read and see Jesus. And the one thing this pandemic is teaching us is to learn to work together, to partner, to pool resources. Joseph phoned a friend, Nicodemus, who like him was a seeker. He had snuck up secretly by night to Jesus. He knew he couldn't do it alone. And together they made a burial plan. Together they became partners. Together they pooled their funds to pay the thousands needed for the burial and the anointing spices that would be fit for the burial of a king. So what can we do during this time? Shrug our shoulders? Well, no. We can form new partnerships and get stuck into our church shop our workplaces, our community projects. Do you know, it struck me that any crisis can either freeze us or free us. This is the time to value even more the friends who have journeyed with us in better times. We can volunteer, we can deliver meds, speak to the lonely, fund the needy, spread the good news, meet together, affiliate with different groups of people, even if only on Zoom. And during this time, we will discover what our real priorities in life are. We can lay new patterns of living well, whether in crisis times or not. And like Joseph, this is not a time to hang around. It's a time for active engagement. This is our moment to find our purpose 
and to fulfill our callings in life. This is the time where we step up and become individually and together a prophetic voice, a prophetic voice to our church, a prophetic voice to our community, a prophetic voice to our city, and yes, a prophetic voice to our country. This prophetic voice is a signpost of hope, of an awakening spirituality that is birthed, yes, in these deep times of hardship. But we know that Jesus will lead us through the other side. We're not immune from the tragedy, the pain and the pathology of the asphyxiated world we're living in. But we are not without hope. We don't know any more than Joseph did precisely how the story of our crisis times will end. We do know that our hope is not in solutions of medicine or politics or finance, vital as these are, but in the resurrection hope of Jesus, which is the motivation and the inspiration for us to build our communities. We know that life is not going to be the same again, but we get stuck in to build new patterns of life for a new emerging community that will come through this crisis, to reimagine what these communities we are forming in our streets, in our changed workplaces, in our meetings, in our churches will look like to embrace the cultural, not only the digital changes that we are experiencing. We need to set and to reset our priorities for life, to remember that the spirit gives life, to rethink our values we're working on, working for the common good, to restore our confidence in the community brought about by the resurrection of Jesus. And this painful shaking of our lives could yet be the greatest moment of our lives. Now is the time to strengthen faith in the world, for the world. If we think with our heads about our hopeful future, if we respond with our hearts to God, if we take on with our hands the day-to-day -day tasks that the crisis requires, we will emerge from this crisis strong and resilient. We'll become engaged, we'll become involved. This rebooting of priorities and values may yet be the making of our generation. We don't know how our own life stories will pan out, but we live in the hope that he who conquered death is alive and that same power which raised to life what was left of Jesus' dead body is available to you and to me to turn what is left in our lives, unsettled by this crisis, into the greatest legacy of our time. On 
the days defined by agony when it's all too much God hear my cry help me walk beyond the anxiety oh it's not easy you are with me I know the mystery We live in the hope that Jesus is alive and that same power that resurrected him from the dead is now alive in you and me. If you've received the Spirit of God then that is true today and so I pray that throughout this week and throughout these coming months where we're still living in this time of uncertainty that you won't look to the things that are seen because they are temporary, they are transient but you will look to that which is unseen. You will look to our God in heaven because that is eternal, that lasts. So let's trust in God, let's get to work, let's build partnerships, let's hope for next year. Let's be Christ's light shining in this place. May God be with you. Amen.